Hey folks, Nick Horbertson here, and today we're going to turn this cigar box into an arcade-style MIDI controller. Let's get started! So for this project, we'll need 16 30mm arcade buttons, four 10K potentiometers with fancy looking knobs, a 30mm Forstner bit, a soldering iron with solder and soldering wick, various jumper wires, a drill, and a microcontroller. For testing everything, I'm using an Arduino Leonardo, but for the final build, I'll be using the Teensy LC. He's so tiny. We'll be using female to male jumper wires to allow us to plug up the potentiometers easily. And for the buttons, I'm using this arcade button wire that snaps into place and then I'm cutting off the other end of the connection so I can attach it directly to the microcontroller. We'll also need a cigar box. I bought a lot of 10 of them from Amazon but you could probably go to your local smoke shop to find some. And finally we'll need some jumper wires, a micro USB cable, and the outer rail from a breadboard. And of course I'll link up everything in the description. I got you. First we'll make some holes in the box. You can print off your template or use graph paper if you're low rent like me. You'll notice that this is a different box and that's because I used the wrong size bit at first. At the American hardware stores the hole sizes jump from 1 and 1 8 inch to 1 and 1 4 inch and 33 millimeters is somewhere in between so I did have to get a custom bit online. With the 1 and 1 8 bit it was looking pretty good but the wood cracked when I forced the buttons into the socket. You can sand the holes to make them a little bit larger but I got impatient and well what the f. I also learned that it's a good idea to have something in the box to prevent piercing on the bottom layer. So here's our Forstner bit and I have laid out our pattern. No turning back now. The Forstner bit is a bit messier as it bores the hole out entirely rather than just cutting along the perimeter of the circle like a hole saw does. For this cigar box, I thought that the top layer was just solid wood, but it looks like it's some kind of green fiber board. There is a layer of padding inside of the box and I'm hoping that will absorb the impact if the bit comes through the top of the box too hard. Oh! That's why people like to use a drill press and have clamps on their box. Well, now we know and we will be sure not to make that mistake again. And this is why I usually stick to software. Here's our box all cleaned up. The top is pretty solid and I'm not worried about it cracking like the last one did. Now our buttons will slide securely into place. The 30 millimeter bit is definitely the right size to use for 30 millimeter buttons. I know that sounds obvious, but I was just hopeful that the one and one eighth would work since it was the only one I could find at the store. And also in my defense, the internet told me to do it. If I were pushing the buttons into some thick MDF, then maybe that size with some sanding would work. But anyways, just get the 30 millimeter bit if you can find it because cigar boxes don't just grow on trees. Then push in the potentiometers. If I were to do this build again, I might just use switches instead of using potentiometers because I like the idea of using them to toggle on and off drone notes. Plus the values for the potentiometers take additional configuration and the values seem to jump sometimes quite a bit. When we get to the coding part here in a bit, I'll show you how I use the potentiometers like switches and a workaround for the jumping value issue. So here is the body of the MIDI controller. Now we can start on the guts. I added a bit of super glue to the potentiometers to keep them in place. It is quite sturdy, but the glue can get into the pot, so be careful if you decide to use some. So a little bit more about potentiometers. If you are gonna use some, then get good quality ones, test them first, don't use glue on them, create solid solder connections, and calibrate the output and code for a consistent reading, most of which I did not do. Next, I'll snap in these arcade wires, clip off the ends, and strip the wires. First, I'm starting with the button's ground wires, which are all connected and will feed directly into the microcontroller's ground. I'm using the outer track of a breadboard for this, but a more permanent solution would be to solder them together on a perforated board. The box is already getting a little bit snug. I thought I'd put the microcontroller under the buttons, but I don't think there's enough room, so I'm gonna position it over the pots. This will stretch the button wires to the max, but I think it'll all fit. Now I'll upload a quick sketch to make sure that all the buttons are working. In another video, I went over installing the Surface Control and MIDI USB libraries. We'll be using those for sending over our MIDI events. I'll leave a link in the description to that video, but in summary, you'll need to download the Control Surface and MIDI USB repositories from GitHub and add them as zipped libraries. On some microcontrollers like the Teensy, the MIDI USB I think is already included, but if you run into any compiler areas, then it's probably a good idea to go ahead and add those again. Now to take those input wires and solder them to our Teensy. I'm not the person to teach you how to solder properly. I'm the person that says, if I can do this, anyone can. 
I'm using a heavy breadboard with pins to hold the teensy in place and positioning the wires for soldering. Heat the board and the wire for a few seconds, then feed in a bit of solder. It really isn't as bad as I thought it would be, but these holes are very tiny. If you bridge any connections, you can just remove it with some solder wick. Just turn on a fan for the fumes, take your time, and even you can do a mediocre soldering job. So here we have everything wired up except for the potentiometers. I've also added a hole in the back of the cigar box for the cable to come out. If this is your first time working with Teensy, you'll need to download Teensy Duino. It is a Teensy IDE that allows you to run Arduino sketches for your Teensy board. And this is totally legal and legit as Arduino is an open source project. Now over here in Teensy Duino, here is our preliminary sketch with just the buttons. The control surface and MIDI USB libraries are doing all the heavy lifting for us and all we need to do is to declare our buttons and call the control surface loop. Also in Teensy Duino, you will want to change your USB type from serial to MIDI. Now let's give it a go. I just plug it straight into my computer's USB and GarageBand and Logic will detect this as a MIDI controller automatically. <laughs> For the final step, I did this off camera, I connected the potentiometers using the female to male jumper wires and connected one pin to ground, one to power, and the middle pin to the analog pin on the Teensy. In the loop of our sketch, I've made it where a note will play if the potentiometer value is less than 2000 and the note will stop playing if the value is above 4000. This buffer will prevent any problems with the values jumping and it allows the button to operate like a switch so you can play those droning notes. And here is the final result. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this MIDI controller build walkthrough. Let's continue the conversation down in the comments and good luck in your MIDI controller building adventures. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.